Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and today is Wednesday, February 22nd, 2017. And in this video, I'd like to take a look at the uh, top 10 components of the QQQ. Uh, just go through the charts on various time frames. I'll move through these uh, as quick as possible, uh, maybe not even expanding on some of the charts that I don't see anything on. Uh, but being that there, that's a total of 30 charts, I'll, I'll need to move relatively fast to keep this video uh, under a manageable time limit. Uh, the reason that I'm doing the, the top 10 component to the QQQ, I do these, these videos often several times a year, um, and I do that uh, for two, two reasons. One is to either confirm, help confirm or refute my analysis on the QQQ. Reason being, if we take a look here, these are the top 10 holdings within the QQQ, and collectively they represent over 51% of the performance of the Qs. Therefore, the top 10 components, if you want to know where the Q is going, uh, the top 10 are going to tell you where it's going because uh, that is rep makes up over half the, the performance of the entire index of the NASDAQ 100. Uh, you can see Apple's top weighted with Microsoft, and the weightings go down a bit. But uh, don't forget that Alphabet has two share classes and collectively makes up um, nearly 9%, uh, therefore putting really essentially Alphabet as a company uh, is the second uh, has the second biggest impact on the queues. All right, uh, and and the other part, uh, the other reason I should say for going over these is these are also some of the wide, most widely held stocks in the world. So there's a good chance, a very good chance that anybody listening to this video, some some people listening to the video right now own one or more of these companies as well, and therefore the individual analysis might be uh, useful to them. All right, let's dig into the charts. This is QQQ. I'm not going to spend uh, much time on this because I've covered this uh, in detail yesterday and in, in recent videos. Um, you know, the story is the same. We have a divergent high. Now, somebody did point out to me recently, and they make a good point. When I draw wedges, uh, and I often state this as I'm drawing wedges, that uh, if you only have a couple reactions, you have two reactions back here, as you can see with this yellow trend line, the uppermost wedge line. And uh, somebody brought up, well, that line is arbitrary because it can I extend higher. Absolutely. I say that all the time. Uh, I refer to divergence as either potential or confirmed because if the indicator are moving higher and prices moving higher, you have the potential that these divergences are taken out. By taken out, what I mean by that is the previous reaction high, in this case right here, or to take out the larger divergence, we have a, a reaction high here. And again, uh, as I've stated many times, the, the QQQ is this series of these smaller divergent highs. Uh, again, they're not drawn out on each and every one. I might have removed some of the trend lines. So you see a little divergent high here. Uh, and a correction. You see divergent highs, uh, you can see all the various lines in there. But again, the bigger picture is one large divergent high. So really it's this peak right here um, that must be taken out to completely negate these negative divergences on the daily time frame. As of now, they're still intact, but again, should prices move higher, um, then maybe the divergences come in at a higher level. And until and unless that and those November highs are taken out uh, or that peak, then the uh, negative divergences are still there. Uh, and again, uh, we don't have any sell signals. The short trade idea that I put on last uh, week was a, what I call an anticipatory uh, trade, very aggressive. I was clear to state that, that we don't have anything even remotely uh, resembling a sell signal yet, uh, but I do believe it's coming this week, um, still do. Now, I'll, I'll, I also noted on the site recently, somebody pointed out that the RSI had actually taken out and made a new high and asked, well, does that uh, take out the divergen divergences and does that matter? Um, well, it certainly removes uh, negative divergences on the RSI because we now have a higher high. Um, however, what I said to that is, number one, you don't have to have negative divergences uh, at a top, nor do you have to have bullish divergences or i.e. positive divergences at a low. Um, so it's not required. It just helps to confirm a likely trend change, uh, particularly when those divergences are confirmed, as I said, with the uh, indicators turning, rolling back over and crossing over. Um, however, I mentioned that in the case of the RSI, this only makes me uh, more bearish for a, a, a sizable correction. Uh, you can't make it out here because I have my, my numbers very small, but we closed yesterday at 85.28, which if I'm not mistaken, and I did put up a chart on this recently, that is the most overbought reading in over a decade. 
the most overbought reading. And there's only been a handful of times where we've even come close to that level. I put a line up recently at 80, uh, which is quite a bit below in percentage terms. So this is almost a Six Sigma event to see the uh, stock market get this overbought. Again, um, I went back a decade. I might have even went back 20 years, and I don't think we've ever seen uh, on the daily time frame the Qs this overbought. Um, and I, I clearly illustrated on that chart what happened every time the RSI even touched that 80 level. Um, corrections shortly ensued thereafter, and if I'm not mistaken, I don't think we had a correction less than 10%. So take it for what it's worth. There's nothing 100% in stock trading or technical analysis, I should say. Um, but uh, all we can do is look at past patterns in the market, past developments. And that's what technical analysis is all about, trying to predict future price movements uh, based on you know um, similar patterns and and technicals in the past. So there's that. Uh, so again, doesn't matter much, in my opinion, that the RSI has taken out the divergence. If it did, and it wasn't much on, uh, you know, so overbought, um, I might not dismiss it as much. Uh, but it is. We're extremely overbought. One more thing to note, too, guys, is, you know, there's handfuls of different um, indicators out there. If you put up those stochastics, for example, you can see from that large divergence I'm talking about within the wedge, the yellow pattern, uh, you have negative divergence on the stochastics. Uh, sometimes you really have to stretch these out to see it. Uh, let's put the stochastics back and put something else up like on balance volume down here, OBV. Uh, on balance volume, you can clearly see a divergent high with the OBV uh, not keeping up from the peak back here at this point. Uh, so there's divergence, as I say, I, you know, the MACD and RSI or PPO and RSI happen to be some of my favorite indicators. I keep those up at almost all times on my daily time frames, but there are a lot of others out there. And these are called referred to as price and momentum indicators and oscillators and uh, divergences across the board. So again, uh, we're just now waiting for a sell signal. We may not get that at any time soon. You know, eventually we know the market will pull back, but uh, uh, so let's dive into the stocks and we'll, we'll move on from there. Uh, and I also want to note the similarity between a lot of these top 10 holdings and um, the QQQs. Uh, we have trend line going off. Let me uh, just check that. That's a price alert on ONCE. If anybody wants to note that, looks like we're breaking below this trend line. So that's one to keep an eye on today. Sorry, I think I covered, yeah, there's a 60-minute chart. I already covered the daily, right? Yep, there it is. All right, almost done here. We're close to halfway finished. Amazon, Amazon's just a you know, great company. Uh, goodness, I know I spend more than I should on Amazon, and I'm sure a lot of other people do. It's a great business model. And, um, you know, again, is it one of my favorites right now? No, absolutely not. But I do see, again, a series of divergences, a fairly well-defined uptrend line. This is a daily chart, guys. Uh, I'm going to skip the 60 on it. I don't think I have a lot there. Here's a weekly chart. We've had a series of uptrend lines. And, again, these drops might not look like much, but I pointed it out here. That was a 32% drop following that divergent high. Uh, you look at this, we haven't had a divergent high until now. Uh, that, that last divergent high broke back in 2011. This is the first, very clear, by the way, I, this is the type of divergence I like to see. All that clear separation between the two peaks as we have here. So you have very clear negative divergence, a well-defined uptrend line slash rising wedge pattern. And, um, you know, what's going to happen is despite, you know, how, you know, whether or not Apple's a great company, I'm sorry, uh, Amazon's a great company, great business model. Uh, it is a top component of the QQQs. And if and when the markets break, you see forced selling because the same thing that's lifted a lot of these companies, uh, the fact that people are buying the Qs, a lot of institutions buy the Qs, um, the NASDAQ 100, they benchmark it uh, and, and just try to mirror it for the most part. Um, that means when you ha they have outflows, they have to sell what they have a lot of, and that's going to be the top holdings. And so this cuts two ways. You know, in a bull market, it really lifts these companies and gives them an extra boost, if you will. Um, but when that breaks, I, there's my high probability target zone. And, um, you know, I'd certainly expect a reaction there. And if things get really ugly, um, we might go down to that second target zone. Facebook, uh, let's start here on the weekly. We're already on a weekly chart. This, this is a well-defined trend line. I like this trend line. We had an intra-week pierce, but you see that green candle? That means we closed back above it. So the only thing below that trend line 
up till it broke down recently were just candlestick wicks or shadows uh, and a, a body, but that slides that and close back above it. So very well defined, meaning there's a lot of reactions there. You can see the negative divergence. You zoom in and you can see how steep it is. Double divergence, actually. We had a divergent high at this point, which is where it broke down. So the primary bull market uptrend line in Facebook, or I should say this is the pri what I call the primary. This is a secondary bull market uptrend line. They're really parallel lines. Broke we broke down, we back tested, and the divergence at this point we made a slightly new high, and that put in even uh, sharper, more steep divergences. So I fully expect uh, Facebook, and again, days, weeks, hard to say, possibly months, but I doubt it. I would put the time frame where this one starts moving down within days, if not just a few weeks. That's just my guess. Take it for what it's worth. Uh, there's the daily chart, divergent high, and I don't know if I have much for you on the 60. Well, yeah, there's a, looks like a, an ascending broadening wedge pattern broke down. We're back testing right now. These are, these are horizontal support levels to watch. This one's not marked. It's at 129.38. You can see all those levels there. That would be a very high probability target right here, about 122.31 on Facebook. Intel, I'm on a 60 minute, so I'll just stay there right now. Here's a minor uptrend line. Just broke down today pretty convincingly. Intel, as you guys know, is 800 pound gorilla in the a semiconductor arena. So um, you guys know I've been screaming a uh, big correction coming in the semis for a while. We haven't had the technical evidence. We jumped the gun on a few, but uh, I still think um, there'll be a, a, a lot of money to be made on a short on the semiconductor stocks uh, sometime this year and sooner than later. We're just right at the top of the apex on all those wedges on, on the majority of the uh, semi ETFs. Uh, but Intel is the big leader. And when that one breaks, here's the primary uptrend line. It comes back to August 2015. One, two, three, four, five, six reactions on that trend line. That gives that trend line a lot of validation. Uh, so set an alert. And when that trend line breaks, uh, especially a daily close, uh, that's not going to be a good thing for Intel. Here's the primary bull market uptrend line. Same story. Intraweek break and a close back above. Other than that, a lot of beautiful reactions off that trend line. So this is the uh, stick of fork. I mean, we're done other than a possible back test. But if we have a solid weekly close, big red candle, impulsive selling through there, um, that could likely mark the end of the secular bull market in Intel, or at least open the door for a sizable correction. I would say down to, at minimum, this $29 level. That's Intel. Cisco... Uh, Cisco's been strong lately, no doubt about it. Same story, divergent high. There's a weekly chart. Uh, I don't have a line here, but you can see this high going all the way back from 2007. Look at that. Coming up to test, it's probably the all-time highs is my guess. I have to go back to a monthly chart, but uh, there it is. Another stock struggling with um, uh, its previous all-time highs, or at least a, a decade-long high. Uh, there's a daily chart. And like the like the cues, it keeps moving up. There's there's only one other reaction on this trend line, so it could move higher. It could take out these divergences. I mean that PPO is pointing straight up. We're almost at an equal high now, so this one would have to reverse right now to keep those divergences intact. Extremely overbought, and if it does reverse, which I think the broad market, will, you know, the broad market, a, a sizable correction, the broad market will take almost all of these top ten holdings down with it again. From what I said, force selling, sympathy selling. Um, so a pullback to backfill this gap, even if you're looking for a quick pullback trade. Um, but once again, not my favorite because I can't make a strong case on the 60-minute chart. This is a parabolic run. Uh, a parabola is a line or a, yeah, a curved line with an increasing slope that approaches zero, um, and that's what that was. So it was a parabola to this point right here. I'd have to. I don't have a parabola tool. I'd have to use a curved line, and that broke. Um, we have a little. Well, not even confirmed divergent high. Let's move on. But there, there's Cisco, um, Amgen. I think we are now at the top ten. Yeah, this is number ten. Amgen. There's some resistance here. Some resistance above. I don't see a whole lot there. Let's look at the weekly chart. Here's the story on the weekly chart. This was a primary bull market uptrend line. It broke down back in 2015, and since then, Amgen's really traded around sideways in this range, uh, right here. And uh, we need to see a resolution of this range, a definitive break um, above, impulsive break above, maybe coming in back test. That would be bullish or break down below. 
Maybe a back test from underneath. Maybe not. You don't always have to have those. We'll just have to take a look at the charts if and when we get there. So that's the story on Amgen, that sideways trading range. But don't forget, it took out this primary uptrend line, and um, it's made a couple nearly equal highs. So if this was an equal high, it might be a hair lower. But for all intents and purposes, it looks like an equal high, and that would mean we have negative divergence there on that high because you can see that the PPO is severely lagging. It didn't even come close to making an equal high or even a, just a slightly lower uh, – I'm sorry, equal low or a slightly lower low, nor did the RSI. So – uh, that's it, guys. All right, got to wrap it up here. Um, this has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. Hope you enjoyed it.